The epistle appointed to be read for this Septuagesima Sunday is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And my beloved people, I beg your attention carefully to these readings that are presented to us during these days. They're very pointed, they're very meaningful, and we must listen and take heed from the epistle. Brethren, do you not know that those who run in a race all indeed run, but one receives the prize? So run as to obtain it. And everyone in a contest abstains from all things, and they indeed to receive a perishable crown, but we an imperishable. I therefore so run as not without a purpose. I so fight as not beating the air. But I chastise my body and bring it into subjection, lest perhaps after preaching to others, I myself should be rejected. For I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized in Moses, in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. Yet, with most of them, God was not well pleased." In the Holy Gospel is taken from St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And having agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. At about the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace idle. And he said to them, Go you also into my vineyard, and I will give you whatever is just. So they went. And again he went out about the sixth and about the ninth hour and did as before. But about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing about, and he said to them, Why do you stand here all the day idle? And they said to him, Because no man has hired us. He said to them, Go you also into my vineyard. But when, ign- but, 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 uh, but when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last even to the first. Now when they of the eleventh hour came, they received each a denarius. When the first in their turn came, they thought that they would receive more, but they also received each his denarius. And on receiving it, they began to murmur against the householder, saying, These last have worked a single hour, and thou hast put them on a level with us, who have borne the burden of the day's heat. But answering one of them, he said, Friend, I do thee no injustice. Didst thou not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is thine and go. I choose to give to this last even as to thee. Have I not a right to do what I choose? Or art thou envious, because I am generous? Even so, the last shall be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Thus, for this Sunday's Holy Gospel. My beloved people, 
I suppose that it's not so terrible outside this morning where it's quite cold that we, I, I'm saying we will have catechism class. But Father Joseph will determine that later on after Mass is over. The children will tell you whether we will or will not have. Those of you who have brought candles to be blessed will pick them up next Sunday. And the St. Saint, Saint Blaise blessing of throats will also be given next Sunday after all the Masses. In this week's bulletin, oh, this doesn't pertain to us, all right. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of February, and there will be an oblate meeting after Mass. Oblates do make the effort to be here for that, and also make an effort to remain here for that meeting. It is not just uh, a, an idle exercise, it is something that we hope and we pray will be a source of grace to all who participate. In this week's bulletin also, you will find the assigned readings for Septuagesima weeks. And I encourage you to, do the, to, to participate in this program of readings from the Scripture, and that these readings should be done only by the Father, or in his absence by the mother. They are not to be done by the children. They are not exercises in seeing how well our children can read. They are to be taken and meditated upon with all the serious that they, seriousness that they deserve. So please, blessed people, do observe these readings as uh, they are supposed to be observed. Again, this morning, or in this bulletin this morning also, is a description of Septuagesima season. Please read that very, very carefully. This is not yet the beginning of Lent. It is only a preparatory uh, portion of the year, and it begins to, to put us into the mood of at least talking about penance and prayer and mortification. We've put away Christmas now. Christmas is all gone. And the last vestige of it will be noticed again only on Tuesday when it officially closes the season of Christmas with the Feast of the Purification, the Presentation of the Blessed Mother. So read these instructions that we give in the bulletin. They're very carefully sought out and they're very carefully presented for us in our instruction and edification. Also, I continue to encourage you to read with utmost care the presentation that, that, that we have in each week's bulletin and whenever we have the freedom to do so, we can't always do it because of the other things that crowd them out, the readings of Father Graf. They are now beginning to become very, very, very pointed. And let us take those points and let us meditate on those points because we are the targets of those points, all of us, you and me. And as is mentioned, I think, in, I'm sure it's in this bulletin today, I believe it is, that the priest, the pastor, is a friend of the bridegroom, hopefully. This goes also for an abbot in his monastery or for any religious leader in his religious institute. So what is said for the one is said for the other. The pastor of people can only introduce the people to his friend who is the bridegroom. After that, 
the pastor has to bow out. And then the formation of the friendship between the people or the person and the bridegroom depends on the goodwill of the person who has been introduced. Many of us are busy looking only at the mercy of God. Yes, we must emphasize the mercy of God. It is vast. It is tremendous. It is a comfort. It is consoling. And it is good. And that we do look at. And we do indeed, my beloved people, emphasize the mercy of God. But in so doing, that does not mean that we neglect looking at the justice of God. Mercy without justice, or justice without mercy, have their own weak, weak spots, do they not? Yes, we are introduced to the bridegroom. Then the work begins with us. This is Septuagesma. We look around about us and we know what we're supposed to do. We know our weak spots. We know how we neglect to do what our duty demands of us to do. We know that. I certainly know when I am at fault. We all do. But we have to pay attention that this is the time that we will correct those faults. Today's epistle of St. Paul is very revealing. All of us being very sports-minded, I know all of you think that I'm anti-sports, I'm not against sports, but sports in their proper perspective. But he points out the runner. You can go and look at any of the sports that we are so interested in, and some of us have been involved in sports in, in younger days. And we know, may I use the word ferocious, training program that we are put into just to be able to play the sport and how willing and how happy we are and when the coach calls us come here and puts us on the front line of training how flattered we are that we have been put on that front line to be trained at the way the coach wishes to train us and that we present ourselves for him to put us through any ordeal thinkable in order to become fit to play the game nothing that is asked of us is too much why is it that we bolt when it comes to the one and only important thing in our lives, the salvation of our immortal souls, why is it that we want everybody to walk around us with felt padded gloves? Oh, please don't do this. Please don't do that. Please don't do the other thing. Now, now, be, now please be nice. You know, uh, you know, we we we're really supposed to do those things. So don't be offended when you're told to do this. Would you please now pay attention? Please, people, listen to me. I beg you. Does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense. And if we were talked to like the coach talks to his players 
that door back there would not open fast enough to get me out of here. And we all know that. And some threatening words were in today's readings. And the last one, for many are called. We wonder about that. Many are called. Maybe we could translate the word, say, all are called. Because God did not create some for condemnation and some for salvation. He wants all of us. Every person that puts his foot on this earth has been called to sanctity. And when our Lord himself was hanging on the cross, he saw everyone whose foot has ever touched or ever will touch this planet. Many or all are called. But then, few are chosen. Few are the elect. As is read in today's gospel when read in Latin, electi. Therefore, we must prepare ourselves and must be there willing to stand up to what is demanded of us to be the elect or amongst the elect. This is not always easy. Go to the sportsman on the football field and he will tell you. Broken limbs, cracked shoulders, split hips, twisted knees. Oh, it's all for the sake of football. That's wonderful. I'm delighted. It goes, I broke my back for the football. Isn't it absolutely wonderful? I'm so pleased with that. It's a relic. A broken back for me is a relic now. I did it for the sake of football. But if the priest says, hey, let's, let's say an extra prayer. Oh, but you're asking for too much. That's a burden. I got other things to do. I got places to go, etc., etc., and 10,000 other etc. Blessed people, our Lord does not mince words. If we are to be the elect or amongst the elect, if we are to be the chosen players, then we must do what he in the priest is not the coach. He invites you to meet the bridegroom, then he backs off. Then the bridegroom tells you what to do. He is the one who is telling us what to do. How quickly are we offended at the slightest suggestion of criticism? And I do mean the slightest. Just the innuendo of criticism is offensive and we go and pout go into the corner with the first class mood because we've been criticized how dare him criticize me I don't make mistakes when is he ever going to find that out or that when someone stops us from doing this or that or the other how quickly do we Question. Does any one of the football players or the sportsmen ask the coach why? Is that word why ever to be heard on the field of sport? There's no such word in the vocabulary of a sportsman. Why? But in the field of the saint, that's the first word that comes out. Why? Why are you saying this? Why? My dear people, it is time for us to get ready to run the course. As St. Paul mentioned so well this morning. We're living in troublesome times. And those of you who keep up with it, I don't suggest that you do, because 
it's something about these times that do put a very sour taste in one's mouth. Whether these things are on the political arena, or the, the secular arena, or the religious arena, uh, we find that uh, there's much to be desired in both places. And so we know the utter confusion of it all. Only last night, and all, a lot of these things come popping out on Saturday nights. I guess Saturday night is bath time, so we might as well take of every, think of everything to be bathed, go to take care of all these things. I had two people to talk to me over the phone, over an hour's worth, trying to deal with the conf- religious confusion that is rampant at the moment. It, it always has been, but right now it is especially bad. So therefore, I point this out to you so that you will have reason to run the course, that you will not run without purpose. This is a penitential time of the year, a prayer time of the year, a holy time of the year, mortification and such like. Beloved people, I want you to have an intention, a very topmost intention in performing your works of, 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 of spiritual nature, mortification. I want you to place this intention at the feet of Almighty God. That you will give, first of all, that you will take your sufferings and mortifications and such impenances and such like, and that you will want them and ask to have them joined, to join them to the penances and the sacrifices and the sufferings and the scourgings and the bleedings of Jesus Christ himself. And that the angels will take those those mortifications of yours together with your intention and place them at the feet of God. What is the intention? That Almighty God will come to the rescue of us all. Those of us who are trying to run the race. Those of us who are trying to hold on to the faith. Those of us who are struggling to be what God, Christ, has does expect of us to be. That's your intention. That I want you to give that to God come Good Friday. When you see him hanging on the cross. And not just something fictitious. Not just something that we look at and say, yes, how sad, how sad. My beloved people. If our blessed Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be nailed to that piece of wood and jerked around like a piece of beef for you and for me, now put your money where your mouth is. If he was willing to go through that for me and for you, then, my beloved people, you and I must be willing, likewise, to be nailed to that piece of wood. And if I fail to do likewise, then I have failed. And being nailed to that piece of wood demands that when we speak, use the word, the conversio, the turning, 
that I turn completely and totally right about faith. Not just part of the way, but all the way. And how much does he want of me? And I will only repeat what you already know. How much does Christ want of me? Put my money where my mouth is. He wants all of it. Every speck of it. How much is left for me on this earth? Nothing. What part of nothing do I not understand? Is what I have to put into practice. I have to be willing to put myself on that same piece of wood and put up with all the sufferings and the contradictions and the criticisms and everything else that is meted out to me in the course of a day's time that I can accept it with the same resignation and the same acceptance and the same frame of mind that he said what, uh, that, he, that he had when he said it is all done and when you can say that that it is all done then you are ready to face him with all the glory that you are due or that I am due that's where we are we are not whistling Dixie as we used to say, we can't use that word anymore now, I understand. We're not whistling a tune to some fiddler someplace. We're dealing with the creator of all things. And who am I that I dare stand up and look at him straight in the face and say, I'm doing the best I can. Yes, you are doing the best you can, and I'm doing the best I can. But he also said, you must be perfect, as my heavenly Father is perfect. Is, is this possible for us? No. No. But the effort to do that has to be there. No ifs and ands about it. No arguments in any way, shape, or form to excuse myself. When it comes to arguments, we are past masters at it. And our argument list notation is more computerized than the computer itself. When it comes to giving reasons why I don't do this and why I do that. When I face him, I hope, on that awesome day, he is not going to accept a single one of my idiotic reasons. It's the last moment of judgment, a fearsome moment of judgment. And it is absolutely an unimaginable moment also of mercy. Pure, unadulterated mercy that will be meted out to me according to my just deserts. Even if I came in at the last moment, I shall receive what is mine. And he will give it to me as we were also told in today's gospel. Nothing will be left unjustified. We will be given what is ours and we will be told to go. We are not dealing with the flim flam that is going around the sidewalks of our world. And it is flim flam. I mean purely and simply. We're dealing 
with him who made us all. He is the greatest hope that we've got. The greatest desire that we must have. The greatest thrill that we must enjoy when the time comes to go and hear the sweetest words that have ever reached our ears. The sweetest words. Come. Come to me, my child. What else do we want besides that? That is the greatest victory for me personally that I will have ever, ever in my lifetime enjoyed. It's that serious. It's that dreadful. It's that beautiful. It's that rewarding. It's that magnificent. It is that totally gratifying for me. I have won the race I kept the faith.